I am the Mighty Pez. In this video, I will be discussing and demonstrating the 74-245 series octal bus transceiver with tri-state outputs, and how to use that IC to prevent contention on a shared bus. So please, join me. This integrated circuit is a 74HCT245 bidirectional octal bus transceiver with tri-state output. So what does all that mean and why would you need this chip? First, let's start with why you need one. Here we have a logical bus diagram showing multiple devices which can read from or write to a shared bus as necessary. Purely as a simplistic example, let us call the input device a keyboard, the output device a display adapter, and the input-output device memory. So what happens when two devices try to write to the shared bus simultaneously? We get contention on the bus and an undefined state for data trying to be read from the bus. This is bad and will likely cause unexpected results. To prevent this issue, we use an IC such as a bus transceiver or buffer to coordinate access to the bus. In this example we can see that the first buffer is allowing the first device to write to the bus while the last buffer is in a high impedance state thus blocking the output signal of the third device and also preventing the signal generated by the device number one from interfering with device three's I.O. pins. This ensures that the bus signals are clean. Let's talk about the specific device, a 74-245 bus transceiver. First notice that this specific device supports eight bidirectional data lines. Depending on how the direction pin is set, data can flow from the A pins to the B pins and vice versa. Or if output is not enabled, the output pins go into a high impedance state and thus will not pass any data. Also notice the inversion bar over the output enabled pin. This tells us that its normal enabled state is low, and to disable the output, we set the pin high. Here we see that if the direction input is high and output enable is low, or in an enabled state, signal will pass from the A to B pins. Next we see if the direction input goes low and output is enabled, the signal flips and will pass from the B to the A pins. Here we notice that the direction pin is set high and the output enable pin is set high, the disabled state. This causes the output pins to go into a high impedance state and will not allow traffic in either direction. Now to demonstrate a circuit using the 74-245 IC. The board is already pre-set up with power and ground pins to the IC and a resistor on the anode side of the LED. First, to set the IC up, we will wire the direction pin to a high state. This will forward signals from A to B. Then we bring ground to our board through a resistor to be used for the default low state for the output enable pin. Now let's wire pins 1 through 8 from the B side of the IC to the LED. We will wire a random input pattern for the A side. Now we bring the ground signal over to the output enable pin as previously discussed. Applying power, you can see that the transceiver IC is passing the signal from the A side as input to the B side as output. 
To test disabling the output enable pin, we will add a line from the 5 volt rail to the high signal and add a switch. When the toggle switch is closed, it will bypass ground and feed the output enable pin with a high signal, thus preventing output to the bus. Finally, we will remove the hardwired inputs and join this module to our flip-flop register circuit from a previous video. This is the first step to having a memory bus that will allow us to manually enter data into a RAM module without conflicting with other devices on the bus, and then allow disabling the input board to allow the memory to communicate on the same bus to the CPU. Both the memory module and the CPU are next steps, and I will be adding each to the shared bus in a future video. Now that we have joined our 8-bit register to the shared bus, let's test it. OK, our test is not working as expected. You can see that our devices on the bus are sporadically showing output. I might be tempted to edit this out and perform a clean test, but I won't. In each of my videos, I try to make a point that all input pins should be tied to something, high, low, or another device is necessary. And yes, my mistake was leaving the direction pin floating. I missed a jumper. Easily correctable, but a common error when your circuits act in an unexpected manner. And now it works as expected. I hope this video was informative and I was able to explain shared buses, bus contention, and how we mitigate the issue with a 74245 bus transceiver. Thank you for watching.